Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. And specifically in this video, we're gonna cover CPUs. But hit that like and smash that subscribe because we're gonna cover a whole lot of things. We're gonna cover memory, CPUs, hard drives, NVMe, how to install VMware, how to update your BIOS, how to do mass updates, plus much, much more. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R530 server. We're gonna start this series off with CPU, so let's get rolling. So there are two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 and E5 2600V4. I will note with the V4 though, you need to make sure you have an updated BIOS, otherwise you might not be able to use the V4. We've seen uh, customers who think they have either a bad server or a bad CPU, um, and really you just need to pop in a V3 real quick, uh, update the BIOS, and uh, you'll be able to run V4s. If it's not working, that could be a, a problem for someone out there. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend for uh, my Dell PowerEdge R530 server? And really it depends on what application that you're looking to do. Uh, so what I always tell people is for low-end procs, uh, we have a couple of CPUs that we like, the E5 2620 V3 and the E5 2630 V3. I like those because really, if you're on a budget, those are uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, the 2620 V3 is a, a hex core 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, the 2630 V3 is a, uh, eight core uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, both of them, again, are, are great solutions. If you're looking for uh, that kind of sweet spot, the uh, the value CPUs that I like to call them, uh, the E5 2660 V3, the E5 2670 V3, and the E5 2680 V3, all are also great procs that are gonna be uh, a little bit better than the, uh, the low end ones. They're gonna cost a little bit more, but they're not gonna break the bank as a whole, and they're still gonna be really, really great options. So with the uh, 2660 V3, uh, that's gonna be a 10 core. Uh, with the 2673 uh, V3, it's gonna be a 12 core. Uh, with the 2680 V3, it's gonna be a 12 core, and it'll be uh, 2.6 gigahertz, uh, 2.3 and 2.5. So as far as uh, the high end, which you know is a, a great option when you're talking Talking about the uh, 530 as a whole, uh, because sometimes uh, you know people are looking to get a box that you can put in you know 40 cores in and still keep it for only a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, you go buy a 40 core uh, Prox server brand new, uh, that could be upwards of you know 10 grand, right? So uh, this could be a great option if you want a high-end CPU and you don't really want to spend a ton of money. Uh, so there's several that we recommend: the E5 2690 V4, the E5 2695 V4, the E5 2697 V4, and the 98 V4, and again, uh, they're going to be more expensive than the uh, the value CPUs, but they're not um, uh, you know horribly expensive overall. You look at like uh, some of these Intel scalable CPUs or the AMD Epic CPUs that are coming out right now, which are pretty awesome CPUs, uh, but those are really really expensive. Uh, I mean, some of them are two, three, four, five grand for a proc. That's you know kind of insane. Now, obviously, if you're doing uh, you know super intense applications, you're going to need that, right? But not everybody needs that. And with the uh, 2690 V4, you can get at 14 cores. Uh, you can go uh, up to the next one and it's going to be uh, 18, 18, and 20. And we'll throw all the speeds in there as well for you. But again, those are just all great options uh, on the high-end side, okay? Uh, now I want to actually open this up since we know more about the options. Uh, I want to show you how to remove your old CPU and install the new upgrade if you are looking to upgrade your machine. Uh, before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gloves and be right back. All right, so we'll show you how to install this on that we have our ESD gloves on. So um, I went ahead and put on top of our R530 here all the um, necessary ingredients to do this upgrade okay so uh, you can just have a regular screwdriver if you need we got wrapped an electric one uh, here's the cpus we're upgrading to these are actually uh, e5 2640 v4s is what we're doing for this build uh, we have our trusty rag to clean up the old cpu that we're taking out and uh, our thermal grease to put on the cpu that we put in so we'll go ahead and toss all this to the side for now i just wanted to show you what we needed now to open this, it's going to be like uh, really any uh, Dell server you've ever been into. Just make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open, lift it up. Really simple. And once you are in, um, I'm going to go ahead and point out a couple of different components since this is just going to be the, the first part of the series. Um, you're going to have your back plane. You're going to have uh, all your different uh, fans here. Uh, you're going to have your air baffle, uh, which when you lift up will be your CPUs and all your dim slots. Uh, you're going to have your 
uh, redundant power supplies back here. Um, and you're gonna have your uh, different PCI slots uh, via the riser here. So uh, that's pretty much uh, the heart of it as a whole, uh, as far as uh, uh, where you install the RAID and the NIC, we'll show you that as well too. So, um, all right, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, pop out uh, the air baffle, but I did wanna note on the air baffle, uh, it does point out this is CPU one and this is CPU two, uh, which is helpful. It says it on the motherboard as well, uh, but where it says it on the motherboard is under the CPU, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, so I do like that the air baffle does show that. So uh, we're going to start here with uh, CPU one. All right, so now we're going to actually remove the heat sink, and I'm going to show you the how I like to do it. You can do it any way you want, really, but I like to go uh, zigzag. Uh, kind of like you're changing a tire. I just feel like it helps as far as uh, relieving some of the overall pressure. So you need to get um, uh, good overall pressure pushing down here, not too hard, but enough that you don't strip the screws because uh, these uh, screws get stripped. Uh, it is definitely a pain to get them out. So just be um, careful with them. And of course, push down hard enough, but not too hard where you're you know, jamming it into the motherboard or anything like that. All right, I'm gonna do this one one more time, make sure, yep, okay. So um, now when you lift it up, there's a couple things I'd like to note. Um, you don't uh, know, unless, I mean, you put it in a long time ago, I guess, but you don't really know how much uh, thermal grease is gonna be down there until you open it. Um, sometimes there's just a ton of thermal grease. So when you lift it up, uh, one of the things I do uh, recommend is to lift it up kind of slowly and just straight up so that there is any uh, just chunks of old dry thermal uh, paste that's flaking off. It's not just getting all over your board. So I'm just gonna lift it nice and slow, straight up. And luckily there's not, this doesn't look too bad here. Um, so one of the things that I will say, um, you know, depends on, you know, when you want to clean it. Some people just take it out, toss it to the side because uh, they don't care about the old CPU. Uh, you might be interested in reusing the CPU or reselling the CPU or just giving it to a friend or whatever the case may be. So if that's your plan, um, I actually recommend if it's not too, too bad in here, cleaning it up while it's still in here. Um, the only reason I like that is just because it's still firm into the socket. Uh, the only potential problem here is you got to make sure you protect the pins. We talked about 2011 pins in there. Uh, if a little bit of thermal paste gets in there, it can just wipe out uh, the whole socket. It can basically mean you have to get a new motherboard because uh, it's so hard to get that out. Uh, it's just, you'll, you'll see the pins. We'll scroll in in a minute. It's just so, so fragile. So um, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to just be really diligent and careful here uh, where I'm just kind of getting a little bit of this off and I'm going to try not to uh, spread it onto the brackets themselves uh, because again, if it gets onto the brackets, when you go to close them, um, or you go to close it and put the new CPU in, you could potentially have uh, the brackets drop some of this thermal uh, paste in. And again, my whole concern is just taking care of the machine itself um, and not uh, damaging anything while we're in here. So honestly, it looks good enough for me. Um, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put it into uh, our tray over here where we already have some open slots to put them in. So um, it's really easy to take it out as a whole. Um, you do have to be uh, really careful though uh, because this is the point when uh, a lot of people get kind of careless um, and you can accidentally uh, scrape the part or scrape the corner over here that I'll show you in a second and just wipe out again some of these pins that you have to be very, very careful for. All right, so to get it out, you're just gonna push this clip down and you're gonna push it in. This is gonna pop up and same thing, you're gonna push this down and push it in. And when you do, there's a clip right here that's actually gonna release the bracket that covers the socket. So I'll show you, push down here. And this right here, you'll see it just goes up and down. All right, and one of the things that I like to do is if you actually push back down on this, it's gonna lift this up and make it kind of easy to just pull this up. And one of the things I like to do is check inside here uh, sometimes you will have some thermal paste that's caked in there. Um, this would be the time where you would you know, grab the rag and clean it. We don't really have anything too bad, but I'll just show you just in case. Um, this would be a good time to do that because again, if you have it caked in here and you go to put it back down, um, it could very easily get into your pins. And again, it's all about protecting the machine. That's what we care about here, right? Okay, so when you pull it out, couple things. Um, I like to personally grab from the sides right here as opposed to right here. Uh, there's just a lot more space on the side as far as uh, how the uh, the socket is um, set up. Uh, there's just not as much plastic in the way. You can easily grab it and have a firmer grasp on the CPU. Um, I personally like to pull straight up. Um, I've seen people who will kind of uh, pin it a little bit kind of like this into the corner where the uh, the two corners are, are, pet, are kind of uh, pushed up against the socket and then lift straight up. 
that's fine as well. I personally like to just go straight up. Uh, the only thing you really want to avoid doing is when you pick it up where you kind of go like this because then you can drag that corner and just wipe out a row of um, pins like it's nothing. So that's one of the things you need to be really careful about, okay? So I'm going to grab right here on the edges, lift straight up, and voila, we're done. It was just that, that easy, okay? Um, so now we're going to uh, put the new one in, but I did want to scroll in right now. I want to zoom in and show you. Um, look at all those pins. Uh, I've been uh, talking about just how many there are, how fragile they are. Uh, if any thermal grease in, gets in there, if you accidentally bump it with your finger, if you accidentally bump it with uh, the CPU, you can easily damage the motherboard. This is um, literally the most sensitive part of the entire motherboard, so you just have to be so, so careful with it when you're working around it. Um, you know, as a whole, the upgrade is easy, but you just, again, have to be careful. Take your time, um, take a few extra seconds, just be careful with it. Um, the next thing that I wanted to point out is on the CPU, if you look right here, there's this gold arrow in the corner, okay? Now, if you look at the other ones, they don't have that gold arrow. It's just right here in this corner. If you look at the motherboard right here, there's also an arrow, okay? That's where you want to put the CPUs, line up the arrows, okay? So we're going to come back in here. I'm going to get a good, good grasp on it. And we're going to put it right here in the corner and come straight down and ran it. It's just that easy. But again, you want to just be careful, come in, and then just make sure you have it installed the right way, okay? So now here's the fun part. We get to use our messy thermal grease. So some people go overboard, put a ton. Some people go underboard and don't put enough. So you really need a good balance here. Um, personally, I like to kind of draw a square. I just draw a little square and then just put some dots on the outside kind of around it. Um, and then I like to fill in my square. Um, so this way when I push the heat sink down, um, it's going to uh, smash the thermal grease and it's gonna push it to the side. Um, not too much though, where it goes over the side and potentially again gets into uh, the socket or gets all over the um, the brackets or the motherboard itself. Um, just enough, the right amount. So now we're going to come back in here. So this thermal grease still needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to just clean this really quick. And you can make it even better than this, but just for demonstration purposes, this will be good enough. So we need to um, go ahead and close the bracket. So we're going to go uh, the opposite direction. What we did, we need to push this down, make sure this clips up, push this back down, come down and over. Same thing, push this back down and over. And now we'll put the heat sink on. So now we're gonna just line up the, uh, the screws, get it set up properly. And then we're gonna do our zigzag pattern again. And we're gonna come back over here. And just like that, we've upgraded our CPU. If you made it this far, hey, do us a favor. Click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you use uh, Dell in your data center or really HP, Supermicro, Cisco, IBM for that matter, uh, we would love to help you out. We custom build servers for data centers all over the world. Uh, we carry a ton of Dell 13th gen in stock, including of course the R530. Uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business uh, and compare some quotes with your current vendors. Thanks for stopping by guys.